Okay, share this video with everyone. Massive PSA time because you are screwed out of the national decks for up to a week if you answer math problems in Fantina's gym properly. You need to fail intentionally until you find the Drifloon trainer or else Drifloon is only available Valley Windworks on Friday. However, it can only be the Friday after you beat Mars. Now, if you beat Mars on Thursday going into Friday, that counts. So the strat is if you don't want to do the Fantina thing or whatever, is that you need to start your game on Thursday, two hours before midnight, because it takes like an hour and a half to be defeat Mars, and then you need to wait until 10 a.m., because Drifloon's only available from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. during the day. So then you need to wait until 10 a.m. to return to Valley Windworks on that Friday and then encounter Drifloon that way. Or again, you can just bypass that by Fantina. However, if you catch Drifloon, then you can trade it with your friends that screwed up because they didn't know about this. Unless they remembered some shenanigans from 14 years ago. And there are a couple of like uh, Twitter threads that are popping up about this. Lamau reviewers were locked out of the post game unless they answered Fantina's question wrong. That be the fact of the game right now. That be how it is, and this is the biggest lockout for the national deck, so please leave a like on the video, that way it gets promoted to everyone as a PSA, and share it with all your friends. This information needs to be out there, or it's just bad, it, it's, people are just screwed for no reason. Also, Lamau, games journalists in 2021, no one reads their reviews or else this information would have gotten out a little sooner and maybe helped out some people, but yeah, it seems like no one cared about the reviews at all. This is going to be your guide to getting the national decks in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I honestly wasn't expecting to make this guide, but I forgot that you really can't do anything in Diamond and Pearl until you unlock the national decks by seeing every Pokemon in the regional Sinnoh decks. Like the survival area, can't do anything about it. Also, Rotom, Poke Radar, a lot of the Pokemon, you just don't have access to them. So what I'm going to do is complete the decks from where we are right now. My Pokedex, I've seen 131. I've only got 19 to go, but I skipped some trainer battles, so I'm missing some big ones. And then there's just some, like, random ones I didn't care to find along the way. So let's go and just hit that up. Now, I am going to be using a checklist. Like, this isn't like, oh man, I'm big brain, or I'm searching every Pokemon location on Peter or something. Now, unfortunately, we've got this covered, so I know I am missing the Krikatoon. Evolve from Krikatop, and yeah, we can do that, or Route 206, Route 210 at night. I want to test something. I want to see, like, if you just live change the time, if the Pokemon spawns change. They have to. It seems like Pokemon Sword and Shield, unaffected. Or maybe I don't have to change the time too much. This guide, I think, is only showing, like, the best times for Pokemon to be available. But Route 12 just says Krikatoon at all times of the day. So let's see if we can just go and find it during the day. But I'm pretty sure that, like, yeah, it's like Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield. However, changing the time will lock you out of time-based events, like Drifloon won't appear. And I don't know if the lockout is 24 hours, which is kind of standard, or 48 hours. Like in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where it was, like, super punishing. Another cool thing about getting the National Dex is that you only need to see all the Pokemon. You don't have to catch them. This isn't shiny charm shenanigans, but uh, we're just going to run it through, and then I'm going to see Krikatoon. Probably not catch it, because I don't care about the shiny charm. Then we'll be on our way to the next one. And there's our boy Krikatoon. Can I get a diddle -diddle -diddle whoop in the chat for that? Um, also, another thing worth noting is the Grand Underground does mix things up compared to Diamond and Pearl. So if you're just exploring in the Grand Underground, I recommend encountering every Pokemon that you see if you know that you already haven't seen it. It's going to help out with some of the tables and some of the Pokemon. Just a lot of Pokemon found in all kinds of areas. And until you get like a certain amount of badges or certain availability requirements in the National Dex, you're just going to stumble into Sinnoh Dex Pokemon, and you can use the Grand Underground to greatly help your national decks adventure like i'm kind of kicking myself for skipping over some pokemon speeding through the game because i will have to pay for it so missing cricket tune there we go um there's some embarrassing ones on my end no graveler all right we can just kind of find graveler anywhere and we can just kind of keep on going down until we have some more interesting ones Okay, and this is where I learned that the other website I was using is trash because it only shows you how to catch the Pokemon and not encounter them for the national decks. So I found this list. Uh, honey trees, that takes time. Really, it's just going to be best for the trainer battles for any of like the special Pokemon. So turn of forest, route 214. We're going to be here for a while. I'm making these mistakes so you don't have to. 
leave a like for my pain and suffering. And for yours as well. We'll just have this mutual thing going on. Alright boys, we're getting near the end. So if you want to see the alternate version game, Legendary Pokemon, just go to the Elder's House in Celestic Town. It's the big one at the top. And then also, don't forget to visit the Lake Spirits. I just encountered and ran away from them because the National Dex is more important to me right now than farming or grinding for like competitive Lake Spirits or something. Pretty sure beat the Elite Four, GG, easy, they'll, they'll respawn. So I didn't really care too much about that. But at the end of the day, no Drifloon. And Rowan shows no sympathy. You show progress on the decks, 150 Pokemon. Technically, it is 150 to complete the Sinnoh region decks because Manaphy doesn't count. So regardless if you have Manaphy or not, it's not going to really change anything. But after this happens, like say you show them all the Pokemon, Professor Oak shows up, gives you the national decks, and then with that you receive the Poke Radar, and then the game starts to get crazy. Um, tons of features start to unlock after you receive the national decks. There's also a lot of other things you need the National Dex for, like Heatran, Cresselia, like I mentioned with the post-game on the Battle Island, but also with the expanded Grand Underground, a lot of Pokemon spawns locked out by it, so if you want to get the starter Pokemon from other generations, Totodile, Mudkip, Piplup, also we got Squirtle up here, that's going to be a thing, other rare Pokemon like Dratini, that's going to be National Dex for the Grand Underground, uh, we also have some special Pokemon stuff going on, and then if we go to the Trophy Garden, that's a feature that some people may or may not remember. So after the player has gotten the National Pokedex upgrade, pretty much going back through like Diamond and Pearl content or also just looking up guides for Brilliant Diamond, Shine, and Pearl, you're going to find it's like after you've gotten the National Dex, then you can do this cool thing. Uh, Pokemon do not otherwise appear in Sinnoh will be placed in the Trophy Garden, and that's going to be from Backlot. Talks about Pokemon spawn, there's 20 different species. Don't know if it's changed too much in uh, Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl. This is how it is in the original games. And yeah, you get Pokemon like Cast Form. Porygon's gonna be a big one. Ditto, you can get that with the decks, like or with the uh, Poke Radar anyways. So it doesn't really change too much right there. Eevee's cool, there is an Eevee event in the game, or not an Eevee event, but an Eevee gift in the game now. And yeah, there's also like some interesting stuff. Probably gonna do a trophy guarding guide. Just kind of go into some of those interesting Pokemon. Uh, the last two Pokemon placed in the garden at any given time will remain available until mo more Pokemon are placed in the garden as well. So you do that, and then the counter is not reset at midnight, but after 24 hours, time skipping is a 24 hour lockout, which is how people are also getting themselves into the Drifloon problem. And I think that's it. There's more things going on. But it's pretty much just like tedium, trial and error. So it, depending on which day of the game you're in as well, just try to battle some trainers or at least keep an eye on maybe this list as you're going along. It took me a bit of time, like an extra two hours to go back and make sure I went and rebattled all the trainers I was missing. Um, Pichu, like the baby Pokemon from the Breeders on Route 209, that was a thing. Route 223 was where I got the Lumineon. And overall, you're going to encounter most of them. Like, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, I got 130. This is going to be easy. But still took a bit of time. And then you still have to, like, optimize for some of the Pokemon. Some of them being rarer than others. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.